Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. I, one, need to clean this filming space. I have just a lot of random cardboard around. I have one box that still needs to be unpacked. We just aren't quite settled in yet in this space. And there is a piece of furniture missing, which makes it a little bit tricky, but I need to clean this area. And I thought while I'm cleaning this area, I would do a Q&A video. So I did do a poll over on Instagram. And I also went to the Facebook group to ask if you had any questions. You guys definitely delivered and I have a ton to answer. So today's video is just going to be me cleaning the space and giving you a little Q&A. Before we get into that though, I am doing like a little life update in this video as well, which I am so incredibly excited for. The big thing is that I have officially quit my job, which I am so excited about, also really nervous about. Now, the first question I get asked when I say that is like, oh, are you going full-time YouTube? And that is also no. So I was working with a mortgage company for marketing. That's what I went to school for. And it was fun, but it was very restricting on what I could do, who else I could work with. And so I decided to make my own company, which is wild and very nerve wracking. So I've been doing a lot of things behind the scenes about paperwork and business licenses and taxes and attending seminars for the state. So there's just been a lot happening over here, but I'm excited that starting Monday, I'll be working for myself. And yes, I'll have more time to spend puzzling, but I'm also going to be setting up my own business, which is absolutely wild. So I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a really good shift for me um, to move out of the mortgage space and more into the marketing space. It opens way more doors. I can help way more people. And I'm just super excited to get going with this. I do feel plan on making my channel a little bit more relevant in my life. So currently this is just a hobby. I love doing it. I like filming and editing, but now I do want to kind of focus a little bit more on it. So I won't be full-time YouTube, but I do want to really kind of hone in on two videos a week, maybe three, depending on how much I can get done. But I think it's going to be awesome. I have so many videos planned and so many things just happening behind the scenes. So just wanted to give you that little update. It's just going to be a big shift, but I also think it's going to be great for my channel and I cannot wait. Now that we get that out of the way, I'm just going to show you a pan of what it looks like in this space. I have one box in the corner that still needs to be unpacked. It's mostly board games, I think. Um, I do have some artwork just all around on the floor. I have a stack of puzzles that need to be put away. The puzzle table is just like, there's just stuff all around it and on top of it that don't need to be there. I am currently working on a video. So I do have some puzzle stuff that I need to keep out, but in general, I just need to tidy up and yeah, while we're doing that, let's just answer some questions. So I know right now it doesn't look too bad. I just have a stack of puzzles here that need to be put away. Not too much space going on on the shelves right now. So I do plan on getting another bookcase, at least one or two that I can use as storage in here. Um, I have the under the, the stairs storage, but I think I'm going to use that more for games than I am for puzzles um, or for filming equipment. So that's my plan for in that space currently. Um, but I do need to work on my puzzles first. And I do know there's a couple questions about my collection in general. So I will clean the space and then answer those. I also have a stack of puzzles that's right here that needs to be put away. Um, those are puzzles that I've done. They're just sitting on foam board. There's a couple that I need for videos, but I don't need them on the board. So that's what my plan is currently. questions about my actual collection. I first have, how do you keep your puzzles organized? Um, it's very loosely organized by brand. Um, there may be a few that are out of place due to size, but mostly it is organized by brand. I keep things that I've done versus not done together because I pretty much remember. I um, mean, it just visually looks better like to have all my Ravensburgers together, to have all of my like New York puzzle companies together, just so like the height of the boxes are all the same when they're up. But in some areas, it's just craziness because there's just so many different brands. It just kind of looks wild. So there's really no rhyme or reason for some. Um, there's a couple shelves where it's just like pretty to look at, like the bright ones in the middle are designed that way. But actually these are mostly Sunis. Um, these ones are mostly LNS Essex. So 
However, there are some instances where I just am running out of space. So I do need to get some more shelving in here, but I think I could also weed out some of the ones that I've done or don't plan to do, but there's really not too many that is the case right now because we just moved in. So I think I'm just running out of space. Someone also asked how many of the display puzzles behind you have I done versus need to do. So I did a little bit of counting while I was just organizing and I don't know what my Christmas holiday puzzles are like because those are stashed away in the garage. But out here I have, I just counted 197 puzzles. That's just 2D puzzles. I did not include the 3D ones and I've done 70 of them. So percentage wise, it's not the best, but also I get rid of a lot of the ones that I've done. I very seldom redo puzzles. So once I do a puzzle, I usually either give it away or donate it. So I still have 70 in here that I've done that I've kept for some reason or another, um, but I don't usually keep the puzzles that I do. At least I didn't think I did, but apparently I do because I have 70 of them versus the 127 that are on my to-do list, which, whoo, that's so many, that's so many. Uh, okay, that goes into another question. I don't know where it is on my list, but someone asked how many should would I recommend to be in your to-do pile? And I would say, for me, I do miss having like a smaller to-do list because right now it's just overwhelming. I feel like sometimes the hardest part of me starting a puzzle is picking out which one to do. And I thought it was so much simpler when I only had like six to 12 in my to-do pile. Now that I have so many, it's like, oh, that's a good video. Oh, that's a good video. Oh, that could be a good video. Oh, I just want a puzzle for fun. And so there's just so many options and so many possibilities that I'm often just like stuck in knowing which puzzle to do next. Sometimes I have to do like a randomizer. I actually have like a spin the wheel thing. That would be a fun video to do um, where I like spin to see which puzzle I do just so I can leave out the aspect of needing to decide which puzzle to do. So I think having less is better than having so many because right now I feel like sometimes I'm just, I'm just paralyzed by the decision. And then someone asked, what are my top three puzzle brands? I feel like it's constantly rotating. If you were to go based off of the brands that I have here, I would have to say my favorites would be Ravensburger, New York Puzzle Company, and probably Pintu are my most popular within my collection. And I feel like that's pretty accurate which ones I like best, but there are several other brands that I enjoy doing. I love doing Springbok, I love doing Ellen Essex, I love Magnolia, like there's so many other good ones, but Ravensburger, New York Puzzle Company, and Pintu sent to me my go-to brands currently. There was someone who asked, do I ever redo puzzles or do I plan to redo puzzles? And on occasion I do, it really depends on the image. Like this one here by Ravensburger, it's called Santeroni Sunset, I believe. And it's only a 300 piece and I'm just definitely more willing to redo smaller piece counts than like a one or 2000 piece puzzle. Um, so I've done redone that one at least three times at this point. It's just super fun. I can do it in like 45 minutes. Absolutely love it. So bright, so colorful, so chunky. And so I've been enjoying that one. Also, I do plan on redoing this guy here, which is called Artist Palette by Ravensburger. Um, I got it in a subscription where I rented it and I ended up purchasing my own and I definitely plan on redoing that one. Um, let's see, other ones that I've redone, I've done one of my art and fables. It's called East of the Sun, West of the Moon and it's easily the most redone puzzle in my collection. I think I've done it five times at this point. Um, so on occasion, if it's just a puzzle that I really gravitate towards and I just need that easy puzzle to relax, I tend to redo a puzzle versus taking out something new. Um, but very seldom do I do that. So there's really only like up to five puzzles that I've redone in my collection. I'm gonna continue on cleaning and then I have quite a few questions about other puzzle related topics. Get into the next question. I'm emptying out this 
box that's down here. Um, most of it is our games and I just want to share with you one of our favorites. It's called Ransom Notes. It is so much fun. We actually brought this with us when we were going on the cruise with my parents and it was a blast. It's definitely an adult game. I'm not going to go into too much into detail but super fun. I know it's kind of on the pricey side but it is a lot of laughs and highly recommend. So if you haven't tried it, check it out. Moving on to other questions. I have, when did you start your puzzling hobby? I started probably when I was like three years old. I remember having like my first cardboard jigsaw. Um, I don't know if before, I'm pretty sure I had like those wooden ones, like those little toddler ones. Um, and then when I was a kid, I puzzled all the time because we grew up without electricity. So just had a lot of free time on my hands. So instead of watching TV, I was usually puzzling, usually on the front porch. And I did that all throughout my teenage years and my younger childhood. I didn't do too much in college. And then when me, me and Dave got married, we had a couple, but we moved so often that I would really only puzzle when I found a puzzle like at a yard sale or if his mom gave me one. Um, we really didn't do too many at that moment when we were like moving all the time. But once we bought a house, that's when my puzzling really started. That was around 2018. I had someone ask, did your ship travel the move safely? So if you're new to the channel, I had this big giant 3D puzzle that was from Cubic Fun and it was cardboard so you couldn't quite take it apart and they tried moving it it did not survive the move. They pretty much put it in the box upside down. When I took it out, everything was broken. People were wondering if I was able to salvage it and the answer was no. Like I would have had to use a lot of glue, a lot of tape, but it would not have had the same integrity. Most of the masts were completely broken. Um, so I just decided, you know, not worth the hassle, but I do get contacts from them all the time. So I may do another one in the future. Let me know if you'd be interested in that type of video. I had someone ask, have you ever tried or heard of speed puzzling or puzzle chess? I've only done one puzzle competition and that was at the international convention last July. It wasn't a very intense competition. There weren't many people there. So I, me and one other person did pairs and then I was also part of a group one. Um, we did pretty well, but it was also not a ton of competition to go by. So, but I am also attending Puzzle Jam South, which has a speed competition in there for pairs. Um, that's going to be in Atlanta in September. So if you are coming, please let me know. I'm still on the hunt for my partner for that one. So if you are coming and you want to do the speed puzzling competition, let me know. Um, and as far as Puzzle Chess, I have not tried it, but I've seen it. And that just looks so much fun. I just feel like I need to have someone nearby who does it to practice with because I feel like Dave wouldn't be much into that type of thing. So we definitely be interested in trying it. Um, and I wouldn't mind doing more speedy type competitions, but honestly, I just like doing the casual puzzlers. Uh, my channel is very fitting, so. Someone asked about what puzzle events have I attended. So I did do the International Puzzle Convention last year, which was in Las Vegas. I did not get to go to the Ravensburger Nationals, which was in San Diego, it was really close because I had family in town that weekend. Um, and other than that, I've done some puzzle swaps in my local area, but I haven't really done too much other events. So I'm really excited to explore a little bit more. Um, I feel like I was just like out of the know, but now I feel like I have more intel and more communication with the puzzle community so I can know when things are happening. And if things are close by, I would definitely attend it. Um, as far as traveling, we'll see. Um, the Atlanta one just looked out because I had a ton of airline miles, so I'm not even like paying for my flight there. Um, and then we had a ton of points from Marriott because we stayed in a Marriott for two months while we were in temporary housing. So pretty much the trip is free besides the tickets. So that's awesome. Um, but depending on our budget with the new job in the new company, we'll see if I can do a ton of travel. So I'm putting the games in the closet and I might put some other filming stuff in here too. I don't want it too crazy because it's really deep, but there's only shelving on like the shallow section. So I think I'm going to leave this section pretty open. I may have some filming stuff, but I think that's where I'm going to put like future video and stuff. So that way I can be somewhat organized to like what puzzles I'm doing soon. I can leave on the shelf. So I think that's what I'm going to do. While we are here, I did want to mention the puzzle that I 
did on our camping trip. Someone asked what the brand was and it's called, it's called Sebit Studios. Um, I'll leave the information that I have down below. It looks like they have an email. It's a very small company from Tacoma, Washington, but this is the puzzle here. It was super fun. Um, I did it well next to a campfire in the middle of the woods, so it was just a really good time. I'm not sure what other ones they carry because um, there's really no other branding besides the email address. So I'm assuming it is the sibitstudio.com. Again, I'll leave them down below if I can find them. Only a couple puzzle questions left and then we have a bunch of moving questions. So I'll answer the puzzle ones now, um, but I may have to take a break because Dave will be home soon. Um, so we have a few errands to do, but then I'll probably come back here this evening. So if the lighting is changing, that's what's happening is that I needed to take a break. Um, but it does say, so question was, will you start or stop a puzzle knowing it's missing a piece? Depends on the puzzle. Like recently I did a Springbok puzzle that was thrifted. I love the image so much. I knew it had a couple pieces missing. So I wasn't too worried about it because the image was super cute. It was only 500 pieces and really easy. So it wasn't like a whole bunch of my time. But if it was like a really difficult image and it says that it's missing a piece or two, I would probably avoid it because it's the point of doing the puzzle if you can't do it 100%. Um, again, so really it would again depend on image, but also piece size if I was to do that. Someone asked, are you enjoying the new area? And 100% yes. Um, one, it's just the climate. We enjoy this type of weather. Um, down in Temecula, it was like 100 degrees throughout the whole entire summer. This one definitely has seasons. We've discovered we had a little bit of winter. We had a little bit of spring. Summer is absolutely beautiful. So weather-wise, we're loving it. Um, just things to do, we're loving it. We love to go hiking. We love to go camping. We love to just sight sightsee and go for drives. And it just like everything is check the boxes. Um, as far as meeting people, people are super friendly here. Um, we did join a church and we've met some people there that are in our neighborhood. So I feel like we just overall loving it so far and it was definitely a good move for us loving the house loving the people loving the area um, love that's definitely a small town like we went from a community that had I want to say like 30,000 people or so um, and this is an area that only has like 4,000 people so it's definitely much smaller and more hometown feel and we've been loving it so I definitely think it was a good move I'm going to continue emptying that box and putting this away and then I'll probably have to take a break and then come back and finish everything out. next day I ended up hanging out with Dave quite a bit last night but I did do a little bit more cleaning this morning and it's not a hundred percent there still needs to be some decorating we are missing a piece of furniture that was supposed to be delivered a long time ago but yeah um, so once that's up it'll look a little bit more finished in here we're not sure what else we're gonna do with this space but right now it's at least tidy and there's less stuff on the floor Let's just finish off the few questions that are remaining and then I will sign off we have, does Dave get to be home more now? Um, I'm not sure if that means just on the daily or just less traveled. Um, so in general, yes, he is home more. Um, his commute is so much less. Um, before, it was like an hour and a half both ways. When we lived in Temecula, he worked out in San Diego, so it was a very long commute for him. On days that it was like really busy traffic, sometimes it would take him up to two and a half hours to come home. So as far as commute, it is so nice right now he only has like a 15 minute commute which is fantastic he's home by like 2 30 in the afternoon where before he'd be home closer to around usually around at least 3 30 sometimes 4 depending again on traffic so it's been awesome on the daily um but we do know however that he will have to go in between a couple different ports so he will be going to seattle a little bit next year so it's going to be a longer commute then but in general, he will be home more. Um, however, when you're thinking about travel, because last year he was gone for what's five, six months, um, we don't 
intend for him to do a ton of travel, but there is a possibility in a couple years that he'll be working down in Portland for the weekdays for a, a, an extended period of time. We're not sure how long that would be, maybe eight to 10 months where he's down there Monday through Friday and then home on the weekends, but we are totally unsure of that because there's just so much stuff that could happen in between. But right now we're enjoying that he is home and he doesn't have a commute. And let's just say our gas budget went from like $800 a month to we're not even spending 200. So it's so crazy how much money we're saving just in gas. Uh, next we have, do, do we have kitten fever yet? And not really. Um, we on occasion will find a a couple kittens that are posted on like our local page that we're like, oh, do you want a kitten? But neither of us are really ready for that yet. We are contemplating it for the future. Um, one, I, just the other two boys, they get along fine, but they're not friends. Like Ziggy was kind of like the friend to both of them. Like Ziggy would play with Oliver and he would snuggle with Loki. And I feel like now neither have like a true companion on occasion they'll sleep like butt to butt but that's about it so we wouldn't mind getting a kitten just to have like a third party but i'm not sure what that kitten's personality is and we don't know how it would react how oliver would react to a kitten in the house so we're not sure we're definitely not rushing into it maybe in a couple years but right now we are still i feel like adjusting to a household of just two cats we've had three for so long so adjusting to two has been has been interesting and then the final question we have is do you plan to stay in washington or does dave's job mean you always have the chance of moving around right now it is a mostly permanent position um so we moved up here intending to stay here for a really long time we don't see us moving anytime soon at least in the like the next five to ten years there is, of course, also always a chance that we may because of Dave's job. So if, say, a contract doesn't go through, we may have to relocate. If, but right now, we are here. We're here forever, pretty much. It's a permanent move. So we're just going to accept it as that and not try to have, like, one foot out the door for the potential of what ifs. So as of right now, we are here for the long haul. And, but we've been loving it so far, so I have no itch to go anywhere at this point. But... It's still early days and we'll, we'll see what the future holds. But that is it for me. Today actually is my last final day of work. And so as of right now, I don't have a job besides me planning my own business, which is absolutely wild. So I am so excited. So if you are new here, I would love if you subscribe because it, it's free for you, but it works so well for me. And so that would just make my day. Um, that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.